Hey guys, what's up? Imaya here, the Psycho Spiritual Therapist, and today we're going to dive into one of the three questions that I posed the other day. Who are we? Why are we here? How does it all work? Today's question that we're going to explore is, who are we? Or the famous question, who am I? Right? So the question, who am I, is so paramount to spirituality. And can you figure out why? Well, it's because upon the answer of this question, everything else is built. Everything else, your entire life, every thought, every belief, every action, every emotion, everything, everything, everything is built upon the answer that you give to this question. And here's the thing, many people don't even ask this question. They don't even consider this question. And so therefore, the whole state of the world as it is in today, and I'll let you make up your own conclusions about that, is because we're building on a faulty premise, a flawed premise, an incorrect premise, all right? If you're not even aware of this question, and who am I, who am I, then you're not actually truly conscious you know, it's been said that how will we know when artificial intelligence reaches a point of actual sentience? How do we know when we've succeeded in creating true artificial intelligence? When it asks the question, who am I? But here's the kicker. <laughs> Many humans don't even ask themselves this question. All right? So, who are we? What is the basic premise for which, you know, we should start to build everything on? Who we are is God, a source. If the word God trips you up, pisses you off, annoys the shit out of you, that's fine. You can replace anything that works for you. I'll even make a separate video about how to actually define, if, if that's even possible, what God is. For the purpose of this video, um, God is source, is all that is. I really like the phrase, the one. There is nothing but all that is. Existence is one thing. There is nothing outside of existence, outside of God, outside of the one of all that is. Think of something that doesn't exist. I'll wait. <laughs> Non-existence doesn't exist. There is only existence. There is only God. Within that, Within God is where we exist. That means we are made up of the exact same thing or substance, if you will, as God. We are God experiencing itself from a unique perspective from a completely never done before perspective. We are God looking at itself. Everything else that we see is God looking at itself. You, the thing that you call you. <laughs> that is what we are. We are both a completely unique perspective having a human experience and we are all that is. So based on this information, based on this, it makes sense that having forgotten, having not having the awareness that that is what is going on. If you build your life on that, you're building your life on separation. Separation meaning 
I am not connected to everything else. I am not connected to, you know, what we typically refer to as some sort of higher power. And here's the thing, why do we refer to anything, why do we refer to God as source, uh, to God or source as a higher power, because of this illusion that we are not within God. God is not some angry dude up in the sky yelling orders and punishing us. That is so hilarious. We are within God. We are made up of God. All right. The whole issue has begun with this idea of separation because separation and also means that you are a victim to life and you need something outside of yourself. You do not exist within God. God is outside of you. Love, therefore, is outside of you. Joy, happiness, it's all outside of you. If you do not understand, if you do not know that you are God, that you are one with God, then your happiness, your joy, your love are always outside of you. Your power is outside of you. This is why we feel so victimized to life these days. Because we live in a state of separation from life. We're like, okay, nature is there, this is me. God is there, this is me. Um, my partner is over there, and this is me. Separation, 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 separation. So everything happens to me instead of happening through you, instead of happening as you. You are not in the world. The world is in you. Your body is inside of your consciousness. The world is inside of your consciousness and everything is inside of the consciousness of God. If everything is one, if you are one, if you are just, it's just you, there's nothing else. How would you know yourself? You wouldn't. You would maybe have a slight awareness of existing, but that's it. It's a very vague awareness. If you want to know who and what you are, you have to look around you. You have to see your reflection from all sorts of different angles. And you have to interact with yourself. So if you were God, if you were just one thing, how would you get to know yourself? you would have to set up a hall of mirrors. Infinite mirrors, so you see yourself in infinite different ways. This is what existence is. This is what creation is. This is what we are. We're all reflections of God, looking at itself in a different way and having relationships with itself to get to know itself. And we're playing a game of like, you know, how does a baby start to differentiate and to get to know itself by at a certain point becoming autonomous and saying, okay, that's my mom and this is me and I'm not my mom. That takes a while. Because at first, the baby thinks it is its mom. And, you know, from a spiritual perspective, we can say, you know, instead of pointing at everything, and I'm like, that's not me, that's not me, that's not me. You could, the same thing you could say is that is me, that is me, that is me. And that is actually more accurate. However, you know, we've been going through a phase. Shit, this is actually a different video. All right. The answer to why are we here? Well, we're also, we've been going through a phase, a really long phase of just pointing at everything and saying that is not me, which is a valid experience for individuality. You know, the liver is a liver because it's not an arm, all right? So in one sense, on one level of perception, that is true. But on another level, it's like, well, we are both part of this one body. So in that sense, we are one thing. We don't have the same function. We don't have the same perception. We don't have the same purpose in life. But actually, we are one thing. Does that make sense? Perception, perspective, another really, really fundamental thing here. 
what are we? Who am I? We are both. We're always both. We are human and we are God. We have a unique individual perspective and, and a universal spiritual perspective. We have subjective truth. From where I'm standing, it looks like this. And that is my good right. You know, that's why I'm here to have this experience and not that experience. At the same time, <laughs> being all that is, being a part of all that is, if parts were real, but the parts is just the illusion, remember? Mirrors, mirrors. But you are the reflection in every mirror. Um, is absolute truth. Which is that all is one and everything is unconditional love. And it's just one thing. So remember I mentioned in a previous video, we are like, it's like this. We've gone on a voyage, we've gone on a mission, we've completely forgot halfway through, <laughs> you know, something happened. We forgot, we forgot who and what we are, we forgot the mission that we are on, we forgot why we're doing what we're doing. And so part of this, this discovery um, journey and mission, you know, this has now become part of our mission. If you're out on a mission and halfway through you forget everything, well, then part of your mission then becomes to remember. That is the mission that we're on. So, you know, to say we are God, we are one with the Creator, and therefore we are creators because everything is just an extension. Something cannot create unlike itself. Humans can make chairs. We cannot create chairs. We cannot birth. We do not give birth to chairs. We give birth to other humans. Look at life. This is how it works. Apple trees. Trees give birth to apples. Give birth? Is that how you say it? <laughs> um, dogs give birth to other dogs. Dogs do not give birth to apples, apples do not give birth to dogs. God extends like itself. It can only create other creators. So we are now on a journey of actually remembering, integrating, discovering what it means to be a creator. And no one can tell you that. We can all just share our own experience of doing the cool things that we do and finding out how we are actually creating our own reality in more than just words how we're actually doing that so that's you know part of why I'm doing this channel discovering the things that I've found out for myself that show me not just by reading a book, not just by hearing it from someone else, but actually discovering little by little by little in these incremental, amazing, amazing, amazing ways of like, wow, in this example, I thought I was a victim. I thought this was what was going on. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, and it was all misconception. And everything that is happening in my life, I see how it is set up for me to discover that I am a creator. And that I do create my own reality. And how it, you know, it, and, and to figure out how it all works. And if I show you how I did it, and everyone else, you know, not everyone, a lot of other people share how they do it. That is walking each other home. We can use each other's experiences as inspiration. You know, because the journey that we're on, really, the voyage and where the, the place where we are lost is in our mind, is in our head. Only. We are not lost in this physical world. 
We are not lost in any real way except for in our minds. So what happened initially because we forgot who we are? Remember, we then looked at our environment and said, okay, I am now in the world instead of the world is in me because this is something we forgot. And we see people walking instead of flying. So we're like, okay, I cannot fly, I can only walk. So we've been programming our own mind and of course like the rest of the world as well but not on purpose no one is purposefully you know there is no mind control matrix thing going on on one level there is but again it's well, consensual we've been programming our own minds to say I am human only because we are human, absolutely. And we are God, and we are spirit, and we are multidimensional beings, and we are conscious co-creators. Infinite beings, infinite inter eternal beings. We are consciousness. We have always existed. There has never been a time that we didn't exist. And there will never be a time that we will not exist. And yet, as humans, we are born and we die. Both are true from one level of perception. So there will be another video soon, a whole video about how perception works and why basically that is our only job, perception retraining, undoing a lot of the conditioning to gain true sight. Because perception is always subjective. And the more subjective it is, the less we're able to see true reality. And like I said, because we are incarnated, because we're having a human experience, this is something we wanted, but we've gone a little bit too far into it. So our perception is so subjective that we're like, I only see from this point of view. And all the other points of view are my enemies, are scary. I need to protect myself from it, are not true. I'm gonna fight over. I can't imagine what it's like to be that other person. So much separation. Truth is all perceptions together. So the more we can say, Yep, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. If a person judges you, yep, that's true. If you judge another person, to be like, okay, well, I do that too in some way. Just as an example, you start to include. And the more you include, the more you open your eyes to true awareness. And then you can still choose your subjective experience without separating yourself from the, ex the experience of absolute truth, of God, of your true nature. So, kind of like a prelude to the next video, which is going to be, um, who are we, why are we here? Why are we here is going to be the next video. So I gave some clues in this video. We are here to have this experience, but at the same time, ultimately to, exp to, to find our way back to also knowing who and what we truly are. Not by eradicating our humanness, our unique perspective. No, by combining, by marrying the two, by knowing that you are a conscious creator and having a human experience at the same time, they do not negate each other. They are not mutually exclusive, they are inclusive because that's how reality truly, 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 truly functions. Paradoxes are one and not two opposing things. So you are a conscious creator, you are God, having a unique perspective and you can use anything in your reality to keep proving this to yourself. So stay tuned for the next video, um, why are we here? And yeah, check me out on Facebook, animayasabina.com slash subscribe.